in power rise within our worship rise upon our prayers and let the hand that saw you Fill us with your glory. Oh, yeah. I'm about to, I'm about to preach it. Draws by your grace. Jesus, our glory. Now, we already dealt with when I'm sowing, I'm in the throne room of God. I'm in his throne room. So that's why I have so much authority on the earth to call in money, to decree money. Because when I'm sowing, I'm in the throne room of God. Solomon understood the secret. Solomon understood the revelation. What he did was... He sold a thousand dollar seed because he knew I'm going to release my faith into the glory of God so that I can be a glory carrier as a king. Solomon knew this principle. Solomon stepped into it. When Solomon stepped into this, Man, he was unstoppable. Look what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35 say. Proverbs chapter 3, 35. The wise shall inherit glory. Did you see that? But shame shall be the promotion of fools. So shame is a promotion for people that act foolish. It's shameful. But look what it say. The wise shall inherit glory. Did you catch that? The wise shall inherit glory. This is so powerful because what you want to see in this text is that it's telling you that when you operate in the wisdom of God, glory becomes your inheritance. This is what happens to your finances. You can inherit financial glory. Say, I'm a, I, I inherit financial glory right now. That, that's what happened. When God start releasing money miracles and money opportunities to your life, that's financial glory because of wisdom to sow. See, the seed is the wisdom of God. The tithe is the wisdom of God. God did not create the tithe. Abraham created the tithe. God blessed Abraham so much because he was a spontaneous sower. He was a creative giver. He made up ways to sow. He made up a principle in his mind where he said, I'm going to give a tenth of everything that I got to God. Then God say, I'm going to make up a thing called a tithe. Will you give me a tenth? So then Malachi prophesied and said, bring all your tithes. Wait a minute. It was Abraham that started the tithe. He sowed a tenth into Melchizedek, the man of God that was preaching the word to him. And God gave him a father of all nations anointing. You know what father of all nations mean? Uh, that's territorial anointing. You know what father of all nations? That means that if uh, somebody is in Africa, you father in over Africa. If somebody is in Europe, you father in over Europe. If somebody is in Japan, you father and over Japan. He had a territorial anointing. He was over regions off of his seed. Your seed will give you power over regions. When you get into that region, that principality can't stop you. While you're in that region. It 
Everywhere you go, even when you don't got home court advantage, you still dominated. Even if you in a city you ain't never been before, that demon got to bow to you. Look where it says, the wise shall inherit glory. The wise shall inherit glory. Man, I feel the glory of God going down my right arm. <laughs> While I'm talking to you. My God, as I stand in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I feel the glory of God going down my right arm. Jesus. Glory to God. The wise shall inherit glory. When you operate in the wisdom of the seed. There's financial glory. There's wealth glory. The wealth glory of God will come upon you when you're sowing. The wealth glory of God. See, when I step into the wealth glory, my glory not, this glory not going to make wealth come to me the usual way. Wealth going to come to me supernaturally. Let me say, let me say this to you. Even if somebody got to die for me to get the wealth. Now, I'm telling you how Jesus is a bad boy. I'm telling you how he operates when he's ready to bless you. When wealth glory is. Now, saints, let me just say this to you. Ananias and Sapphira. They was holding back that money. Do you know that Peter found it, right? But they was dead. See, they could have sold it and lived. But they ate it and died. What, what happened? Peter found that money. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I need over 50 people to share this broadcast right now. Over 40. Over 40. Retweet me right now. Retweet me. Everybody, retweet. Retweet real quick. I ain't going to talk too fast so that you can retweet. Take your time and re retweet, uh, uh, Shaquana. Uh, 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 take your time and retweet. Take your time and retweet. Huh? And take your time and retweet. Can I get over 30 people? That's powerful, daughter. You say you traded in your 2016 for 2018. That's powerful. Very powerful. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Rise upon our praise and let the hand that saw you raise. I need, I, listen, everybody right now, retweet again. I need you to tweet, tweet, tweety, tweet. Everybody right now, retweet. Retweet me. Retweet me, everybody. Retweet, retweet, retweet. I received a pay increase and I'm starting my manager position next week. Son, you bossing. You bossing. Because of humility. See? See? That's the benefits. See? You submissive. I ain't got no problems with you. You do what the prophets say, you look at your prospering. Your soul. He been sowing too. See? Now, you step into your manager position. You see that? What you think taking place? That's money moving. I said that is money moving. See, money moving right now. That's what's taking place. I need everyone to share this broadcast right now. Share me right now. 
See, it's going to keep on happening to you. It's going to keep on happening. I need you to keep on sowing. Son, so God can take you higher. See, God be working through that seed. God be working through that seed to get you to another level of finances. If I sow at one level, I operate in that level. I need to go higher in my finances. I don't need to be sowing at one level. I need to go higher. You see that? Don't ever let the devil trick you to uh, stay at the same uh, uh, place financially. No, you're going higher. You're going stronger. There's money reserved for you that you're supposed to take authority over. Say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over my money in the earth. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over my money in the earth. Money, I loose you. Money, I loose you right now. I loose money right now. In the name of Jesus. I loose money right now. In the name of Jesus. I loose money in the name of Jesus. I loose money. The Bible said whatsoever you loose on earth. Will be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose. You can lose money. In the name of Jesus. Money I loose you. Right now. In Jesus name. I need you. Everyone. Uh, share me on Facebook. If you can. Let me share on Facebook as well. Now, uh, Jesus know that you're going to need financial miracles to get back where you're supposed to be in your rightful place. A financial miracle is an easy thing for Jesus. I can sow my way into financial miracles. I can sow until I move God to the degree that he got to do something for me. He can't let me stay in the same predicament. My seed enters me in to the manifest presence of God. When I'm sowing, I'm in the manifest presence of God. I'm surrounded by angels and something got to happen for me. God won't let me stay in my situation when I'm sowing. My situation got to be uh, evacuated. My seed evicts. Every spirit that keeps me broke. My seed evicts every spirit that keeps me in trials. That keeps me in bondage. My seed destroys was stopping my entrepreneurship. My God. My seed will actually make people become my customers when I'm an entrepreneur. I sow my way into having favor with customers. My seed give me favor with customers. My seed give me favor with investors. When I sow, I'm receiving apostolic power to withdraw from the governmental blessings of Jesus Christ. I'm receiving access to the governmental blessings of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus was shed for me so that my seed can work for me. 
My seed can bring any future that I desire, any lifestyle that I want, anything that I am believing God for. My seed already has manifesting abilities transferred to me. I just got to use my mouth and cooperate with the seed. When I name my seed, I train my harvest. And I reign with God. When I name my seed, I abstain from lack. Always remember that. When I name my seed, I abstain from lack. When I name my seed, I abstain from lack. My seed got a name to it. And that name got to manifest in this earth realm. There's nothing that can stop my seed from manifesting in this earth realm. When I give my seed a name, it got to possess that name and bring that name so I can possess it. If I name my seed a house, I get a house. If I name my seed a car, I get a car. I remember sowing a seed. For a, for a vehicle. And then Dr. Mike Murdoch bought me a vehicle. Before I had met him. Before I met him. I was at the dealership. Stepped out of the dealership and called on the phone. Sold a seed. Named it car. Then I got a car from him. I'm still getting cars today. Because your seed is going to manifest. The name of your seed is going to manifest. The name of your seed is going to manifest. You got to get that in your soul. When you name your seed, it's going to manifest. You may not know when it's going to manifest, but it's going to manifest. When you name your seed, it's going to manifest in the earth realm. You're going to see that car manifest, that house manifest. Name your seed. Name your seed. Be, be bold and name your seed because it's going to come back to you. Listen, there might be a little window of time, but it's going to come back to you. Name your seed. That name of the seed is going to come into appearance. It's going to come into visibility. You're going to see your seed manifest for you. Listen, that's the power of God. And Jesus created seed sowing because he want us to have fun. I have fun with sowing. You know, sowing ain't no drainful thing. Sowing is a cheerful thing. Love sowing. Rejoice in sowing because God be checking your attitude. When he see that you love sowing, he'll give you riches at the drop of a dime. I promise you, when you fall in love with sowing, God will make money come to you. He'll do something wild. When you love honoring God financially, he'll do something uh, spectacular for you that people won't understand. People will think that you're a drug dealer. There's a lot of people that think that I'm a drug dealer. Then I told you that story about that man. He, was, he, he thought that I was, he thought that I had some weed on me. Because I look high, because I am high, but I'm I'm high off the most high, man. It's the presence of God inside of me, amen, man, amen. I'm cooling. You know, I'm paying for this meeting and stuff like that, so there's a lot of money I got put into it. Thousands upon thousands and guaps of money I got put into this meeting in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sewing, uh, I'm sewing at the same token. So, so when I go to my bank... They told me they got to order the money. I said, you got to order the what? Y'all don't got no money up in here? Um, uh, Mr. Holmes, we have to... No, wait, you got to order the money to come? Well, I'm going to just become my own bank, man. So, so they got a truck coming with my money. 
Now, cause I, cause I, I is is large money that I'm dealing with for this meeting. I got to pay. I got a band. I got all type of stuff. So, so I'm thinking they're gonna give me the money. They said no. You can't. You know, we we gotta order the money. So I got going. I, I got more money than you. Make me doggone nervous. Huh? Up there, up there, y'all, up there acting like y'all ain't got no cash. I thought that this was America. You acting like this Zimbabwe or this Africa. I thought that this was America. You doggone got to order some money. You... Is this a recession going on that I don't know about? Now, this is what I want you to see. Uh, when I start purposing in my heart to give, When I start purposing in my heart to give, I'm in a supernatural anointing. When I'm purposing in my heart to give, I'm in a supernatural anointing. Look at this. But see, I invest my money in the gospel. See, some of y'all, your heart got to be right. If God gave you $20,000 today, you'll go find everybody that God delivered your life from and you go reconnect with them. And you just grieve God. See, God can't God can make you rich when you operate like that. You, you got to find investment in the gospel. You go find people God don't even want. You... You'll go give money to people God don't even want you to give money to. Why would you do that? They wasn't there when, when, when God set you free. You'll, you'll go right there and, and start pitting money in all type of people's hands. And God like, what? What are you doing? This prosperity with a purpose. Purpose, prosperity. See, with, with you getting money, they don't mean that the money just... No, you got to spend the money for the gospel. Especially when you get into the place where you're supposed to be. You ain't got no time to be splurging. Some people, they splurge too quick. You go buy all this stuff for you, then you're still broke. You could have sold the stuff... And God could have gave you so much money where you would have had more than enough. After you done bought for yourself, you still would have had some more. But when you're not sowing seed minded, you rob yourself out of a harvest. When you rob God, you rob yourself at the same time. Because God was about to give something to you. Now you forfeited what God was going to give to you because you robbed God. So when I rob God, I rob self. See, I'm not just robbing God. I'm robbing myself when I rob God because God was going to give me a harvest off of what I would have did with the money. Sowing. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Every man according to as he purposes in his heart. See, you got a purpose in your heart to sow. You got a purpose in your heart to sow. See, that's when you become a creative sower. You flowing in the glory realm of sowing. When I flow in the glory realm of sowing, I'm going to operate in the glory realm for reaping. So I'm going to get money coming to me at a large amount from the heavenly account. I'm going to experience financial explosions. Because when I purpose in my heart to give, that means that I'm not going to rob God. 
When I purpose in my heart to give, that means that I'm not going to cut God short. Purposing in my heart to give means that I'm submitting my finances to the Holy Spirit. The spirit of mammon can't rule me in this state. Because if I'm submitting my money to the Holy Spirit, now I got divine dominion to show how big I want. I'm not bound to how much I got or, or what, what I think I got. I, I'm bound to the spirit of God. And now I'm free and liberated to sow at my free will. I can name my seed in this state and decide what type of state I'm going to live in. I'm going to live in a state of wealth, a state of prosperity, a state of increase. See, in this mode, I can decide how great my finances become because now I have left the realm of naturality and I can't be stopped. Now I'm taking on a Jesus-like mentality over wealth. When I take on this Jesus mentality over wealth, now I got wealth manifestation moving in my life. I got supernatural increase moving in my life. Say it. Supernatural increase is moving in my life. Supernatural money increase is moving in my life right now. Supernatural money increase. Look what they say here in verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. See, the Bible is letting you know how to give. Saints, you see people all the time talking about they up there going to be rich and they're not a giver. You's a thief. You can't be rich and you're not giving. You saying that you're going to get rich. God ain't going to make you rich. You're going to have to steal like the world do. You don't understand sowing? Well, you ain't got no right to have no money. God gives seed to the sower. He don't give the seed to the dreamer. You can dream about all this stuff. If you, if you don't walk in the seed principle, you're just deceiving yourself. There have been many, many people of God say, oh, you know, the government got money for me. You know, I'm about to get this man believing God for my money. You don't sow. So why you believe in God for money? You can't have what you haven't given. You can't reap what you have not sown. And saints, don't hang around non-sowers. You don't need to be around people that don't believe in honor in God. People that don't sow are, are blankets over your life. They lids over your life. They stop the flow of blessing when you're around them because they're not underneath an open heaven. They might talk big talk, but they're not underneath an open heaven. You don't want to be around people like that. They're not underneath an open heaven. You don't want them to shut down your heavenly portals. You know how the Bible said in Genesis 26 that Isaac, the wells were uh, uh, blocked up by the uh, Philistines. You don't want no Philistine spirit around you. Philistines don't sow. Always remember that. When you're around Philistine people, they don't believe in honoring God. They don't believe in giving money. They won't give God a song. They won't give God a mouth service. I mean, God don't want that. God said they honor me with their lips, their heart far from me. You want to surrogate yourself from people like that, that don't sow. Like, don't let them talk in your ear. Don't, and don't talk to them too long. They mess up your flow of wealth. They mess up your flow of increase. You need to be around people that are tithers and sowers. That sow and honor God. You need trainers. See, I'm your trainer. An apostle come to train you of how to sow. An apostle come to train you of how to honor God, how to tithe. There's so many people that they get paid, they don't believe in tithing. They don't know nothing about that. How you going to enter into riches? You can't even meet the elementary principle of giving. You you gotta you got you gotta start somewhere. You gotta believe in the gospel or not. Cause God already proved to you that He made Abraham rich off a of sowing, made Joe rich off a of sowing, made Esther rich, made all these people rich in the Bible. Is evidence that God is a richest maker. He is a creator of rich living. Not rich living. Not ditch living, rich living. 
God is a creator of rich living. He came for you to live rich. Not live in a ditch. He wanted you to have everything that you desire. Now look what it say. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. See, these type of seeds bring you into wealth. Because why? God not pressing you to sow this. God saying you purpose in your heart what you're going to give. You decide. You, 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 you sow what will stretch you that will make you say, wow, did I just do that? You sow according to what make you feel uh, virtue leave you. I know them type of seeds. When you sow type of seeds that make virtue leave you. When the virtue of God leave you when you sow, you know that something just took place. Your finances just been made whole. Your path just been made whole. Your body just been made whole. Your relationships just made whole. Your mind just been made whole. When you sow them large seeds, them big seeds, you find yourself in the supernatural of giving, just like the church did in Acts chapter 4. They was in the supernatural of sowing. They lost their mind, man. Look what they did. They sold their houses. They lost their mind. How could you have a house and sell it and go get the money and lay it out of apostles' feet? They lost their mind. So that means if their house was $400,000, when they got $400,000, they took the $400,000 and laid that at the apostle feet. They lost their mind. They lost their mind in sowing to the degree that they didn't even care about their house. They didn't care about their livelihood. They said, listen, we'll live on the street. We're going to sow into our man of God. That's some wild stuff. Now I understand why Jesus took me off. Because I was sowing while I was on the street. I was laying money down at my apostles' feet. Wow. And now I understand. My, oh my God. Now I understand my story why God did such a supernatural for me. Because I didn't even care about my living. I was like, man, forget this living stuff. I'm a soul. I found out the secret to wealth. I found out the secret to health. I found out the secret to victory. Secret to joy. Secret to dominion. Secret to authority. Secret to acceleration. Secret to favor. I found it out. It's all in the seed. See? I found it out in the seed. I started sowing. I found it out in the seed. I started sowing. When I found out that this was the secret of God to enter into everything that God has. Yeah. Yeah. I started sowing. I realized that in him, I live, I move, I have my being. So let me use the seed. Let me use the seed for him. I started using the seed as my weapon today. The seed is still my weapon. Saints, ain't nobody can curse me. You know why? I got too much angels around me. You know what make angels move around me? Honor. Honor. Fear the Lord. My secrets. Fear the Lord. Honor. Humility. Three three realms. Humility. Honor. Fear the Lord. Humility. Honor. Fear the Lord. What Proverbs chapter 22 verse 4 say. If you fear the Lord. Uh, and you have humility. Uh, riches, honor, and life is yours. Riches. Riches belong to you when you have humility and I, I fear the Lord. Meaning you, what's the fear of the Lord? When I operate in teachability, I let God teach me what he wants and I do it. And I do it with the fear of God. I do it with fear and trembling. I don't play around with God. See, saints, me and Jesus joke around. But when it comes to instructions, I don't play with that. And, and Jesus don't got to take me no five days to get something done. I move with it quickly. When I when I when I'm moving uh with God, that's a serious move for me. I don't play around with that. I'm laser tag with that. And that's why God let you play around with him in the first place. God let you play around with him in the first place because he realized that you all the way logged in to his his kingdom, his instructions. He know that you logged into his kingdom and instructions. So he let you, he let you play around with him. He let you joke around. He, he talk light to you. When you got a heavy anointing, God talk light to you. 
You don't got to talk heavy because he know that you are obedience, uh, a child of God. You, you are his friend. You do whatsoever he commands you to do. Now, see, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. See, you can purpose in your heart. Hmm? You got a purpose in your heart, meaning decide what you're going to sow that's going to move God. I do this all the time. And, and, and because my spirit is mature, it is God, it's fully God. It'll let my soul know when I'm cheating. My spirit will let my soul know when I'm going halfway. My spirit will let my, that's what conviction is. My spirit will let my soul know, listen, you, 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 be stretched. Uh, soul at the level of your future. Don't, don't soul at the level of your intellect, soul at the level of your future. Now, this is what I want you to see. It's a, a purpose in your heart to give, not grudgingly or of necessity. See, you got to leave these two realms, grudgingly and necessity. See, leave that need mindset. Leave that need mindset and leave that mindset of bitterness and anger when you sowing and regret. Some people sowing and regret their seed. Oh, I shouldn't have did that. Wow. You can't sow grudgingly. You got to... Uh, Tap into cheerful giving, cheerful sowing. You got to tap into cheerful sowing and cheerful giving. You can't give out of a grudging spirit. You can't give out of a spirit of necessity. Don't give out of your necessity. All right. Don't, 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 don't operate of necessity. Break out of that necessity and soul beyond that necessity. Don't don't let that necessity keep you uh, bound with your hands. So strong. Break that necessity because my necessity can break my seed or my seed can break my necessity. You got that? My necessity can break my seed. Or my seed can break my necessity. Hmm. I can stay in that necessity if I don't work the sowing principle. The sowing principle has given me the authority to no longer live a life of necessities. But to live a life of accessories. Write that down. My seed gives me the authority to not live a life of necessity, but a life of accessories. I mean, I get to buy stuff that I don't need. I get to dress up my life. I get to decorate my life. And always know that your declaration is the deck, the, 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 is the decoration of your finances. Write that down. Your declaration is the decoration of your finances. While, while you are uh, in the declaration mode, you're in the decoration mode. You decorating how your money going to look. Huh? And sometimes your money need makeup. Because the face of your money is wrinkled. The face of your money is old. So your, your, your money face needs some makeup. Mm -hmm. when, when you sowing, you, you beautifying your finances. When you sowing, you beautifying your finances. Mm hmm. Your money stash is like an eyelash to your financial place. Hmm? 
Your money stash is like an eyelash to your financial state. You beautify your finances through sowing. Uh, the seed brings beautiful and bountiful blessings. The seed brings beautiful and bountiful blessings. So when I'm sowing, I got beautiful and bountiful blessings. Say it. I receive beautiful and bountiful blessings. I receive beautiful and bountiful blessings in the name of Jesus. I receive beautiful and bountiful blessings. Now, uh, sowing increases my righteousness. My righteousness in God increases when I'm sowing. See? Sowing seed into my man of God increases my righteousness on the earth. My righteousness goes to another level when I'm sowing. Look what it say in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Now he that minister of seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. You see that? And increase the fruits of your righteousness. Oh my God. See? We just dealt with Jesus sitting at the treasury. We dealt with Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. Then we dealt with why he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. With Psalm 16 verse 11. To give you pleasures forevermore. So when I sow money. Jesus watching the money I sow. And he at the right hand of the father sitting down so that he can give me pleasures forevermore. Look what it say right here in the text. The Bible said that he also going to multiply my seed sown and increase the fruits of my righteousness. The Bible just let me know that Jesus was going to multiply my seed sown. So what if I don't sow no seed? No multiplication. So how could I increase in that state? How could I have more money in that state when I don't sow? Because he, he going to multiply, not my prayers. He not multiplying my prayer. He not multiplying my fasting. He multiplying my seed sown. He, listen, he not even multiplying my seed. He multiplying my seed sown. So the seed got to be sown. I got to take the initiative to sow it. Then it multiplies. Every seed you sow is multiplying right now in Jesus' name. See, the seed got to be sown. That, that's why a lot of people are praying for a financial miracle. You see them all the time. I, I ain't even got no energy to respond to folk like that no more. I ain't, got, I ain't even got strength in my mouth. My mouth done lost strength. I can't even respond to people like that no more. That come online and say, Father, uh, 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 please, prophet, pray for my finances. I, my mouth don't even work. My, fi, my, my mouth done lost its strength. It lost power to speak. When people say, pray for my finances. I, my, my mouth can't work. It don't work in that state. It don't work. I can't even speak. When they say pray for my finances, how am I pray for your finances? God say he's gonna multiply the seed sown. You gotta sow a seed, my God. And when you sow that seed, Jesus gonna back you. Lele vasokuna masua. Man, I've I've had my back up against the wall. I've had my back up against the wall. Man, I I know when I owed bills and God told me to sow. And credit up there calling me. Don't call me no more, bro. With your broke self. The creditor now, you like the creditor trying to fight you. Now you the broke one. <laughs> That's why I'm calling you right now, because you broke. Now you do with your broke self. Don't call me no more. You know, they're arguing on the phone with the creditor. Now you the one broke. All right? You the one broke now. Don't disrespect me. This is my residence. Okay? 
No, no, you're the broke one. You're the broke one. And everybody around you is the broke one. All of your company is the broke one. Go tell your boss that you are a bunch of broke ones. Got you up there arguing with the creditor. Got you up there arguing with the creditor. Now you the broke one. Now your mama the broke one. Now your mama is the broke one. You up there throwing up gang signs all by yourself. Your mama is the broke one. Your mama is the broke one. See what's going on? Because you so consumed with the seed. Hmm? You consume with your level in God. Your position done overtook your natural life. Your position should overtake your opposition. Not your opposition overtake your position. Always remember that. Hmm? Your position should overtake your opposition. Not your opposition overtake your position. You rich. That's what Jesus gave you the position for. You sowing out of that position. You releasing that position into the natural opposition that you're up against. You rich. You releasing the wealth. You wealthy. You are wealth. That's the position that Jesus gave to you through the blood. So you releasing the wealth to the opposition that's on the outside of you. Your position is on the inside of you. Everything that you desire and want is already in your spirit. You already carry it. That's why it's called a desire. A desire is a manifestation waiting to happen. Oh, Jesus. Write that down. Write that down. A desire is a manifestation. That's waiting to happen. It's inside of you. That's why God called it a desire. A desire is a fire. Let it burn. Let it spread. It's supposed to come outside of you. Your desire is like lava from a volcano. Your desires is like a lava from a volcano. It's going to come up out of you, out of your belly. It's going to flow. It's going to come up out of you. That's what happened with the volcano. It erupt. That lava start coming down. <laughs> Blessed be his name forever. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I feel the anointing, man. Glory to God. <laughs> Gl glory to God. See what happened? See what happened? You already got billionaire anointing inside of you. You're not sowing to become a billionaire. You're releasing billionaire anointing outside of you. You're releasing billionaire anointing outside of you. You already a multi-billionaire. The anointing already present to manifest it. The glory already here to manifest it. Praise God. Glory to God. The glory of God already here to manifest it. There's angels already done did it for other saints. When the Bible said you so you surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who you think they are? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the forefathers that gave you the right to become wealthy because they sold their way out and they gave a testimony that the seed work, that tithe and work, that when I give, it shall be given unto me and God will go beyond my financial level. He'll go beyond my paycheck. He'll go beyond my education. He'll go beyond what I've been told. He'll go beyond my credit. He'll go beyond what I heard. He'll go beyond Beyond my haters. He'll go beyond my enemies. He'll prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. He'll anoint my hair with that oil. And my cup will overflow. Because I'm a sower. And my seed is working for me. My seed is opening up the door. I will run and not be weary. I will walk. And I will not faint. Because the God of Abraham. And the God of Jacob. And the God of Isaac. And the God of prophet Joshua. Who I, the God of prophet Joshua Holmes is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things. May have an abundance to every good work. He's greater than your situation. He's greater than that alligator. All that stuff trying to bite you. Trying to fight you. Trying to smite you. Ah, Jesus greater than all of that. 
And his power is going to overtake you and bring you into the fulfillment of the word. His power is going to overtake you and bring you into the fulfillment of riches, the fulfillment of wealth, the fulfillment of health, the fulfillment of joy, the fulfillment of peace. You're going to be whole in the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood is greater. His blood is greater than any witchcraft that people try to pit against you. The blood of Jesus break witchcraft tonight. The blood of Jesus prevails over witchcraft tonight. Every witchcraft spirit is saturated with the blood of Jesus. It's over. The blood of Jesus in your finances. Say it. The blood of Jesus in my finances. The blood of Jesus in my finances. The blood of Jesus in my finances. There's the blood of Jesus Christ inside of my finances. I got victory in my finances. Wealth in my finances. Money manifesting all around me. I'm free from debt. I'm free from financial stress. The trouble is over and the double from Jehovah is upon me. I call in wealth. Then the Bible said, call those things that be not as though they were. I call in wealth in the name of Jesus. I, I call in wealth. I call in riches in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, you have whatever you say. I say, I am rich. I say, money cometh to me right now. I say that money is flowing in my life without any hindrance. You have whatever you say. I command every mountain to move. In the name of Jesus, every mountain got to move from my life. Nothing shall stop me from possessing what belonged to me. I step into my wealthy place right now. You've been given a supernatural kingdom. You've been given a supernatural Jesus is in your power. Huh? You ain't got to beg for it. Just believe for it. You already been strapped with the anointing. Huh? You wearing a bulletproof vest. Lack can't even shoot you. Fear can't shoot you. Worry can't shoot you. Evil can't shoot you. Plagues can't shoot you. Tragedy can't shoot you. Lack can't shoot you. Debts can't shoot you. Death can't shoot you. Nothing can shoot you. You got a bulletproof vest on from the blood of Jesus Christ that is shielding you. You got a favor shield on you. What does Psalm chapter 5 verse 12 say? That the favor of the Lord surrounds me as with a shield. You got the favor of God surrounding you as with a shield. You got financial favor as your shield. I'm shielded by financial favor. I'm shielded by financial favor. You know what favor does when it shields you? That means that though people want you to fail, the favor will shield you and make you move in supernatural success. You know what it means to be shielded by favor? That people are going to be planning for your demise, but Jesus is going to lead you into your rise. You're going to rise up. You're going to go higher. You're going to fly when they wanted you to die. You're going to live. Huh? You're going to testify that Jesus is Lord. You're going to testify that he's a God of provision. He's a God of increase. He's a God of promotion. He'll promote me in the midst of the lions then. He'll deliver me in the midst of the fire. He'll set my feet on a rock. He'll raise me to higher levels of finances. And I'll testify that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have a favor shield around me. I'm shielded by favor. Favor is working for me. Favor is all around me. Favor is moving for me. I'm moving in financial favor. The financial favor of God is on me. The financial favor of God is moving on me. I got financial favor every area of my life manifesting right now. See, the devil is scared. Uh -huh. When you get the knowledge in your soul. Because once you get the knowledge of prosperity, you can produce prosperity. You can become prosperity. You can have prosperity. What did the Bible say in Psalm chapter 1 verse 3? Whatsoever you do shall prosper. Say it. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. 
My finances are prospering. That's what happened with Joseph. He was a prophet. They paid him to go work as a slave. He still prospered. Think about that. His functionality was a prophet. His functionality was a prophet, a leader. But he went going as a slave and he prospered as a slave. His functionality was a prophet as a leader, but they put him in a prison. He still prospered in the prison. See, when you have a prosperity anointing, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Even when people try to get you out of your element. Huh? Even, even, even when, 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 when you up against the wall, you still prosper. See, the prosperity anointing can't be stopped. It don't matter what's happening to you, what you see, what you feel, how you're operating. You still going to be successful in what you're doing because you got a prosperity anointing. The prosperity anointing will fight for you and give you a supernatural ability where things will work for your good. Even though everything is working against you, all things will work together for your good. Because you love God and you're called according to his purpose. You got a prosperity anointing. See, when I got a prosperity anointing, you can lie on me. I'm still going to prosper. Right? What happened? The Bible said, look, look in the text. The Bible said, here go the woman saying that, hey, Potiphar was with her. Uh, 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 Joseph, he raped her. He went with her. But look what happened. He still got into prosperity and he prospered in the prison because the prosperity anointing was on him. See, when the prosperity anointing on you, you're going to have people lie on you because they're jealous. They're not blessed as you. They're not favored as you. See, the reason why we talk about favor, because you become God's favorite. Yeah, God ain't a respecter of person, but he'll respect of faith. And if I move in faith, he respect me. If I move in honor, he respect me. If I move in submission, he respect me. If I move in the seed, he respect me. If I move in worship, he respect me. If I move in diligence, he respect me. He's a rewarder. A day that diligently seek him. He respect those that keep on plowing the ground. You don't stop tilling the ground. You don't stop sowing. See? You don't stop forgiving. You don't stop praising. When, when you got favor, you God's favorite. Yeah, he got he got favorites. That's why he put favor on you. Favor not for everybody. Mercy is for everybody. Everybody got mercy. Not everybody got favor. Favor is where Jesus is uh, leaning in the direction of your focus, your time, your presence. He like it. Think about that. Favor is where Jesus is leaning in the direction of your time, your focus, and your presence. He like your presence. See? There are some people that Jesus like your presence. He like your presence. He don't want to be around you. Uh, I mean, he want to be around you. Hmm? Mm -hmm. See, see, my daughter said just received a hundred dollar check in the mail. See, money moving. Okay, money moving. See, that's what the favor of God do. It moves money. Uh, the seed moves money. Uh, I got to get serious about sowing if I want my destiny to manifest for me. I got to sow to get to my destiny. I got to worship. Man, how could I miss that scripture that I had? I got to worship. Man, I had a good scripture. I find it. I got to worship if I'm going to step into my destiny. I can't step into my destiny by might or by power. I got to step into my destiny by worship. Let's go to Psalm chapter 29. See, this is the definition of worship, and we don't talk about this. We don't talk about this. Psalm 29 say, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Man, this is talking about giving money. It's talking about giving money. It's dealing with giving money right here. 
Look, look what it says in verse 2. Give unto the Lord. The glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Then watch what it says in verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Look. Then the Bible say, cast your bread upon the waters. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. See, this giving us a description of how to worship God. We give money to worship God. That's what worship is. That's true worship when I'm giving money. God don't need your mouth. Your mouth can't do nothing. Your mouth can't do nothing. God needs your money. Yeah. He needs to see money moving. That's how he's going to know that you're serious. Your honor is for real. The Bible says honor the Lord with your substance. That's what Proverbs chapter 3 say. All right. It said honor the Lord with your substance. It ain't say honor the Lord with your mouth. Your church attendance. Look what it say here. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Okay. What does Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 say? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1 say. It said, cast your bread upon the waters, for you shall find it after many days. It was talking about sowing money. But it said, cast it upon the waters. This is so powerful. So, if he said, cast your bread upon the waters, and then he tells us in Psalm 29, verse 3, that his voice is upon the waters, that means that when I'm sowing money, the voice of the Lord is speaking for me. Man, when I'm sowing money, the voice of the Lord is speaking for me. The voice of the Lord is talking on my behalf. When I'm sowing money, my God, that's why favor hit my life. Because the voice of the Lord is speaking for me because I'm sowing money. Oh, Jesus. That's why I get delivered out of hatred and attacks and persecution and things that's coming against me because I'm sowing money. Look what it say. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. But it just told us to cast our bread upon the waters. So sow our seeds. Sow our money. So if I'm sowing money and it links me to his voice. Let me give you another revelation. I hear God stronger when I'm sowing. It's powerful. When I'm sowing, my, my ear is next to the mouth of God. When I'm sowing, sowing translates me. I no longer operate in this earthly realm. I'm translated into the throne room of God. I'm being Enoched. All right. My seed knocks and makes me Enoch financially. Write that down. My seed knocks. And makes me Enoch financially. I get translated. Hmm? I get translated. I move out of an ordinary lifestyle. Hmm? I become supernatural in money. And supernatural money start to come to me. When I'm having supernatural money come to me, that means that angels are working in my situation. May I feel the glory of God all through my body. Man, as I stand in the presence of Jesus, there's glory moving through my hands right now. Some of y'all going to feel it. Some of y'all going to feel it. Your right hand going to feel electricity go through it. Holy Spirit, let them feel it. There's an anointing. Ha, ha, ha. There's an anointing. Look, look what happened here. Psalm 29. Glory to God. Psalm 29. Hmm. Watch this. So the Bible just said that the voice of the Lord in verse 3 is upon the waters. Okay? Now, let me show you this. The God of glory thundereth. All right? So whenever you hear thunder, that means that that's the voice of God. He's speaking into the atmosphere. Y'all hear? Y'all ever hear thunder? Don't get worried. Don't get nervous. That's God talking in the atmosphere. The God of glory thundereth. Look at what it say. The Lord is upon many waters. So this is what I want you to see. For the Lord to be upon many waters, that means that there's many different anointings that I step into when I cast my seed upon the water. When I cast my bread upon the water, there's many different anointings that I step into. My God. 
Jesus. When, when, when I cast my seed upon the water, there's many different anointings that I'm walking into. There's many different oils, uh, abilities of God, graces of God that I'm tapping into. It say the Lord is upon many waters. Watch that there. Watch that. Why did the Bible say the God of glory thundereth? This gives you the revelation. The Bible say in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. Verse 4 through 6, it do not, it said, those that watch the wind will not sow. Why would the Bible say those that watch the wind? Because we both know that the winds and the waves meant that there was a storm in Jesus' day. So if the Bible tell us in Psalm 29 verse 3 that the God of glory thundereth, that means that God is over the storm that Satan is causing. No wonder the Bible tell you to sow. And don't let the storm, don't let the wind stop you from sowing. Because the Bible says that the God of glory thundereth. So, so he over that storm that Satan trying to conjure up. He's saying if you sow and not watch the wind, I can stop the storm. Because I'm the God of glory that's thundering. I'm the God of glory that's over the storm. See? See, the God of glory thundereth. See, so what God is saying, don't look at the wind to decide if you're going to sow. Because that little storm that you see in your life, that's the devil trying to puff up his head. I'm over that storm. I can thunder it and I got, I'm the God of glory. So my glory going to manifest and going to bring you out of the storm. If you keep on sowing, say strong sowing hands. Strong sowing hands. See that Psalm 29 verse 3. I'm giving you a revelation here. I'm giving you the correlation here. For I, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and Psalm 29. I'm giving you the correlation here. I'm letting you see how giving money is worshiping God. I'm letting you see how giving money is how you honor God. I'm showing you how when you cast your, your seed upon the waters, cast your bread upon the waters, it meets the voice of God. And the voice of God starts speaking on your behalf. And his voice begins to ride over the storm, ride over your issues, ride over your lack, ride over the attack, and give you victory. But you got to keep on sowing. You got to use the weapon. You got to plow the ground. You got to till the ground. You got to keep on sowing. You got to become a professional farmer. To put on the whole armor. Let's go to verse 4. It said the voice of the Lord is powerful. So when I'm sowing, casting my bread upon the water, the voice of the Lord is on the water. And the voice of the Lord is powerful. So I'm stepping into a powerful realm when I'm sowing. I'm stepping into a prophetic realm when I'm sowing. Because if his voice is on the water, watch this. This is where you meet your prophet. See? The voice of the Lord. See? When, see? See? The, the seed. Is going into your prophet. The voice of the Lord. See. The voice of the Lord. Is upon the waters. So that means that your prophet. Is upon the waters. Alright. The voice of the Lord. Is on, on the waters. So when you cast in your bread. When you saw in your bread. You connect it with the prophet. And it's powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Your man of God is powerful. Your soul is powerful. You got to get that revelation in your mind so that you can know what you're working with harvest wise. Watch what it say. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Huh? That means there's kingship to your prophet, your man of God. There's kingship, there's majesty, there's glory. Meaning the manifest presence of God is shining upon your man of God, the voice of God, your soul. Let's go to verse 5, chapter 29. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Look at this. See, the seed enters me into the breaker's anointing. See? See? You catching that? 
The seed breaks me in to the breaker's anointing. It enters me in into the breaker's anointing. Look, I'm in the breaker's anointing now. Look what it say right here. The seed breaks. What's going on? I'm in the breaker's anointing. Now I'm breaking demonic powers. Now I'm breaking off lack of my life. Now I'm breaking off poverty. I'm in the breaker's anointing. See? The seed entered me into the breaker's anointing. Now I'm breaking off demonic spirits. Huh? All through sowing. Now look at this. My seed is connecting me to the voice of the Lord, which is the prophet of the Lord. And my seed is causing uh, a breaker's anointing to manifest, to break lack and break strongholds off my money. Now I'm breaking strongholds off of my money. Are you catching this? Saints, it's powerful. This is so powerful. Now I'm breaking uh, satanic covenants off of my cash, my provision. Because what I'm doing is I'm working the seed. And I'm worshiping God properly. Not according to my intellect, not according to my flesh. I'm worshiping God through the seed and I'm breaking off uh, generational curses. Because if you look at your generation, you don't find people rich. And you might say that they had a little some, some, but that was hood rich. You being on section eight ain't no wealth. You being on food stamp ain't no rich. And tell us, man, man, we used to have that food stamp, man. We used to buy groceries every Saturday, man. Nah, man, we we had groceries every Saturday, bro. You was hungry, all right? We had, and so, and listen, some of y'all got this mentality. You got to break that mentality. You know what? You think that uh, you think that food stamp is just for food and money is not for food. That, that, now, that's a cursed mindset. You got to come up out of that. You can't think like that. I remember, I remember people have tried to form me like that. Nah, I'm going to use money. I'm going to give me some of the money to buy me some food. You tell us, nah, I ain't going to spend, I ain't going to spend my cash up in the store. I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend my food stamp. Huh? Now you rich, daughter. You rich, son. You got to change your mindset. That, 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 that mindset, it didn't come from the Holy Spirit. It came from it came from your situation. It came from your poverty. See, there's mindsets that can be formed from a place of of being deformed. See, you don't want the deformed mindset to form your mindset. You want the anointing to transform your mindset and reborn your mindset. Huh? See? You want God to adorn your mindset in the places where Satan torn your mindset. Now, you want to be so bold and courageous with the seed that you can accelerate time. Because if I so fearfully, I can stop the speed of my life. The seed decide my speed. I don't want to go slow. I want to flow and I want to sow. So when I sow, I stop my life from going slow. My seed is like a clock. And it's a divine clock. I move past time frames when I'm sowing. Uh, there's a grace for sowing. And there's a great grace. Uh, when I'm dealing with great grace... I'm taking myself out of lack through sowing. Now, now, saints, this is what you want to see. The church used the seed as a means to get great grace to manifest. All right? They used the seed to get great grace 
to be activated. So when I start sowing, I'm activating great grace. Now, when I step into great grace, I'm going to be rich. I can't receive great grace and not be rich. That's the type of sowing that make you rich. All right. That's the sowing that bring you into that grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will he make you rich in the text in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9? We say that we know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to make us rich. Just paraphrasing. Now, when I am sowing, I'm worshiping God. My heart is being purified and perfected because I need a perfect heart if God will make me rich. You got a hunger and thirst for righteousness. You got a hunger and thirst for the things of God. You have to be loyal to the spirit of God. You can't be a double-minded woman. You can't be a double-minded man. When you find yourself hooked in, you committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. You committed to your man of God. You one-minded. You ain't letting nobody come and make you mess up. You're not letting nobody speak the dumb behind words in your ears. You're not letting nobody speak the dumb behind, retarded behind intellect inside your ears. You sticking with Jesus in the word. That's how you know when you have been anointed for wealth manifestation in the season you in. But you got to be tied in to the seed and to sowing. Because this is what's going to activate the powerfulness of God and the breaking of God. Write that down. Sowing activates the breaking power of God. Over my financial situation. That sowing activates the breaking power of God over my finances. All right. When I start flowing like that, it's over. The devil can't stop me when I start doing that. Psalm 37, verse 19, look what it says. You shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, you shall be satisfied. Did you catch that? That means that you got to be rich. That means that you got to be wealthy. In the days of famine, you shall be satisfied. That means that I got abundance and the land ain't even got abundance. But I got abundance. Look what it say right here. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. What did Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 say? Give a portion of seven. Give a portion of eight. For you know not what evil shall be on the earth. So the Bible just let us know in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2. That if I sow, if I give money, if I sow seed... Look what happened. It say that I don't know. I'll be protected from the evil that's on the earth. Now look what it's saying. Psalm 37, 19. Look at the correlation. Psalm 37, verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Look what it just gave you a correlation of Ecclesiastes 11, 2 to Psalm 37, verse 19. It lets you know that uh, if you give, you won't have to worry about the evil time. Then the Bible say in Psalm 37, 19, you won't be ashamed in the evil time. Why? Because you got plenty of money. You got wealth. You got riches. You got increase. You got abundance. So what happened? The seed is delivering me from evil times, financial shame, and financial famine, and I'm being satisfied. See? Say on this line, I am satisfied financially. Say it on this line. I am satisfied financially. Say it. I am satisfied financially. In the name of Jesus. I decree it with your mouth. I am satisfied financially. I'm satisfied financially. I am satisfied financially. I'm satisfied financially. See? Look what uh, Psalm 37, verse 21 say. The righteous showeth mercy and they giveth. The righteous showeth mercy and giveth. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Look what it say here. The Bible say that when you're righteous, you give. 
See? See? Did you catch that? When you are a righteous, see, you can't give if you're not righteous. See, if you're not a righteous person, you cannot give. So, so giving is a righteous thing. When you're a righteous woman, you give. So don't be shocked when you get around women that don't give because they're not righteous. That's why God be telling you don't hang out with them. That's why God tell you not to hang with non sowers because they're not righteous. They're not in agreement with God. That's what righteous mean. Righteous mean I'm in agreement with God. So, so agreement birth wealth. Write that down. Agreement birth wealth. I can't even get wealth until I agree. Agreement birth wealth. I can't even live in abundance until I uh, 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 until I agree. Agreement birth wealth. Agreement birth wealth. I got to be in agreement with God. The Bible says, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? I can't even walk with Jehovah Jireh until I'm in agreement with Jehovah Jireh system. Jehovah Jireh is the Lord over financial sowing. He created the idea of the seed time and harvest because he wanted to have a whole system of us showing our love to him and him showing our love to us. Every time I'm sowing, I'm showing God how much I love him. So people that don't sow, don't love God. They'll say that they love God, they're lying to you. Don't marry a man that don't sow. And don't have no boyfriend that don't sow. Now, if you are already married, blessed be his name. I ain't bothering you. I ain't paying you no never mind. Just disregard what I'm saying to you right now. I'm talking to people that's up there dating or 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 or, or you debating or 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 you you still percolating somewhere. You see? You still percolating. There's a percolation that happens, huh? I'm talking to y'all. You mess around with people that ain't sewing. If that man ain't sowing, you don't want a future with him. That's a dishonorable man. He not going to honor you. I, I gave the reference the other day. What you got to understand about when a man or a woman is sowing, and when that person hears from God, that means that they're going to obey God towards you. If they can't even obey God with sowing seed, well, how you think that they're going to love you? Man of God, how that woman going to love you if she don't even know how to sow? If she don't know how to sow, what's she going to do when God tell her to sow something into you? When God tell her to sow some legs into you. Sow some breasts into you. Huh? <laughs> now, what, what's going to happen? <laughs> when God tell her to sow some arms into you. Huh? Huh? Sow some neck into you. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I'm done drunk. Psalm 37... <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Ha ha ha. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> no. Psalm chapter 37. <laughs> Uh, Psalm chapter 37. Let's look at this here. Verse, so verse 21, let us know that when you're righteous, you, sur you show mercy and you give. Huh? <laughs> show mercy and you give. All right? Look at verse 22. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. All right. The blessing is an empowerment for possession. Write that down. I love that. I love that. Let that sit in your ears. Let that sit in your spirit. You should write that down. The blessing. What I said. Let me see what listening. What was my statement just now? What I just said. 
The blessing is empowerment for possession. The blessing is empowerment, is an empowerment for possession. When I say that I'm blessed, that means that I have an empowerment from God to take authority over my atmosphere, over my inheritance, over my money, and over everything that belongs to me in this earth. I got authority to take, I got power to take authority over houses and lands and regions and territories. See, I know how to pray. I, I think I think that my ministry wouldn't be here if I didn't know how to pray. I, I truly believe that. See, I know how to target stuff in prayer. And, and I know how to bullseye demons. I bullseye them bad boys. I, bull, I bullseye them. Because how they wild, I'm wild too. They're crazy, I'm crazy too. Which crazy gonna win? They hype, I'm hyped too. They turn, I'm turned up to another level. I, I'm, I'm past them. I'm, I'm zero to one million past them. See, my vehicle reflect me. See, because I peel off. See, now you're not going to grab me. You know, the cop shot pull you over, they think you're going to stop. <laughs> I'm not stopping. Yeah, try to pull you over, act like you're going to stop. No, nah, I ain't stopping. <laughs> you're going to have to catch me first, man. I, I'm not stopping, man. You thought I was going to stop, man. I ain't stopping. I'm just going to keep on going. Now, I got, I got stuff to do. You can stop me when we get to my destination. See, they be trying to stop you and mess you up. Huh? No, nah, don't don't take me off my route. I got an appointment. We'll stop when we get to the appointment. So so that they can see the lights on me so they know that I was late to the appointment because of you. No, nah, I ain't stopping. Nah, and then if you got more cops, it's more validation for me. Cause then I got more cops to say that that uh, that that I was I was late. Alright? So 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 it had more validation to me. Just stop me when I get to my dad. We slow down. I slow down. We slow down together. We all slow down. Slow slow motion for me. And, 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 and so we slowing down. We all taking it slow. Oh, and that's how we take it slow. All right. We take it slow. That's, that's how it's going to be. You're not going gonna to stop me from messing where I'm supposed to go. Now, I'm supposed I'm supposed to I'm supposed to I'm supposed to get there on a certain time. You're not gonna stop me. Hand me up there looking all late because you you put on a little ice cream truck light. Huh? Because you got the little ice cream truck light behind me trying to shine somebody. I'm trying to shine some daggone body. No, nah, no. Nah. You pitch your ice cream light off. I got an ice cream light too. I'm trying to shine some daggone body. Have you up there all this different stuff, you know? Have you up there all worried, saints? You know, you know when you're tag bad, you be nervous like a mug. When you see the cops, you be up there, your heart drop. <laughs> you be making up excuses in your mind. This is what I'm going to say when they stop me. I'm going to tell them this. I'm like, your license was suspended. Oh, my gosh, man. man how, how did this happen, man? I can't believe this. Wow. Wow. Man, I'll pay for the ticket, man. I, I, they didn't tell me that my license was suspended. They did not tell me, officer. This is shocking. Can you believe it? You know the officer don't believe you, right? <laughs> Saying so one time, uh, as the Lord lives, I saw somebody with us. I was in uh, San Diego. The man had a tag with an excuse on the back of it. Hmm.
He had he had a whole letter in the back saying, I'm on my way to go to the uh you know, the DMV to get my car, you know, dot dot dot. He had a whole <laughs> and he tagged that thing to the back of it. Say San Diego, they got all old cop cars, they got old preachers. Everything old in San Diego. Got old behind nigger ratchets trying to preach the word. Dead churches all over San Diego. Old men trying to up their preach. Ain't got nothing to say. Ah, the Lord! <laughs> Woo! Brother, I could have just watched the game, man. I don't even like football. I would have watched it just because. Huh? You taking away my stimulation. You got everybody in the pew dry. Everybody want to lie. And nobody receiving a supply. This is what's going on. <laughs> That, that's why that's why that's why the man not enjoying himself. Because of you. God, 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 these ladies up there wearing pilgrimage dresses. While he up there, ow! I'm about to take you to Golden Corral. <laughs> yeah. Nah, brother, we ain't trying to go to the Golden Corral, man. You take us to the old senior citizen ones. Giving us grandma biscuits and stuff. I ain't I ain't trying to eat no grandma biscuits. Not to grab my biscuits. Then they get mad at you, them old old behind men. San Diego. The city of brokenness. I was about to go there for real, and then, and then I said, God, listen. I said, Jesus, I don't like it. He said, I don't like it either. He said, Would you go for me if I told you to go? I said, Yeah, I'll go, you know. <laughs> I'll go for you, Jesus. You feels me? I'll do it for you. I'll do anything for you. I said, Jesus, please don't send me. He said, son, I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to see how many dusty pastors. <laughs> dusty behind pastors in San Diego. There's not one pastor in San Diego that's not dusty. All of them dusty. I ain't... And you find one of them with the Holy Ghost. And all of them old. Now, brother, ain't you? You should be finding out your life insurance. You, now, you should, instead of looking at me, instead of looking at me, inst in, instead of looking at me, you should be finding out your life insurance. <laughs> Find out how you get, how, how much SSI your wife going to get when you pass on, huh? Every man in San Diego broke. You you go with a man in San Diego, you're going to be broke. They ain't got no money. Up there, you preach for them, they pay you $50. Like, brother, what what is this, a KFC meal? <laughs> man, I ain't even got enough money. Pit, uh, 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 I ain't even got enough money to pit in my car for the whole week. Since I got invited to preach at so many churches, I turned all of them down. Then then they started attacking me. The same churches that invited me, then they started attacking me. I was like, that's why I ain't come. Holy Ghost was right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's Yeah, that's why I ain't come. Oh, they're trying to pay you $50. This man asked me to preach one time. He asked me to preach one time. I said, sir, don't ask me to preach because, number one, you is broke. And I'm not going to have my ministry going to no deficit trying to come to your your, uh, your stuff. I said, I got people that run with me. I got sons. I got assistants. And you, 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 you ain't going to do squat. I'm a prophet. I already know. You just trying to get me to raise up your flock, get them all riled up so you can get a new suit. Because you tired of having the same... Broke behind folk. All of them broke because you broke. And then he got mad. Oh, you up there talking about money. I'm like, stupid. I'm a man of God. You you ain't going to have to use me. I'm not your usage. You're not going to use me for no free. Even a prostitute get paid. Dog on it. And all she using her name. Man, listen, ah! 
Somebody say, I say hot. Yeah. Somebody say, I say hot. Yeah. Somebody say, I say hot. Out there trying to act like this preaching thing for free. I ain't preaching for no doggone free. Don't do it as unto the Lord. Yeah, I did it as unto the Lord. The Lord said, pay sign up in yeah. Soul sign. You ain't got no honor. You don't know who you don't know who you messing with? You messing with a bona fide apostle and prophet. Saints, I ain't never had nobody sing for me and they ain't get paid. All my singers get paid. I paid all my singers before they sung last meeting. All my singers got paid before uh, before they sung. I listen. I only asked for two offerings in five services. Who you think I paid them? I paid them out of my money. I ain't hype you up to give. The glory of God was strong in my meeting. I ain't hype you up to give. I fed everybody in my meeting. I fed food to everybody for free. On their end, I ain't charged them for no food. I sold. Because my heart is perfect. What, I, what I'm saying is there's no excuse for people to say, oh, I'm in a ministry, so I ain't going to give. No, no, you got to honor people that, that they singing dog on it. Musicians. Huh? My musicians get paid. You think Johnny didn't pay for me for free? They don't, they don't play. I, and they would play for me for free. But that's how they is. They love me. I mean, they love me in their own way. <laughs> you know, you got to have some nigga right love somehow. You know, we all got our own way of nigga right love, you know. All right. All right. Huh? Man, Johnny going to be in this meeting right here in Atlanta, Georgia. He... Don't be in this me in Atlanta, Georgia. I told Johnny, take care of yourself so, so you can run with me. <laughs> Look at John Lancer. He said, I'm too white to understand. <laughs> John Lancer, you a black man. I'm going to tell you that right now. You is a black man. We're going to have to check. We're going to have to check check your background report. <laughs> now, uh, that's ministry. You got to be ready. <laughs> you you got to be ready for what God has for you. Hmm? You got to be ready huh, for what the Holy Spirit has for you. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. God wants you to move in riches and wealth and finances. You're supposed to have it. You're not disrespecting God because you want to be rich. Do you understand that he wants you rich? Is the will of God for you to be rich? Say some people say, you know, I I receive whatever God give to me. Ah, yeah, but you wouldn't want nobody with no legs. You couldn't work that out. Hmm. What if God gave you somebody with no legs? How you gonna make that work? Hmm. You be up there telling you, nah, nah. You just take, you just take them up, carry them, and. I'm like, no. They, they take them against their will. Ain't nobody even know what's going on. We're not doing all of that tonight. Yes, we is. <laughs> you don't got no legs, Becky. All right? Therefore, according to what's happening, uh, you don't have any legs, all right? So you don't have a say-so in this. You can't run. <laughs> so what's going to happen? Well, see, 
You, you know that you got desires. God created you to be a person of desires. If you ain't got no desires, you, you can't even live. You got to be a person of desires if you're going to live. Huh? You got to be a person of desires if you're going to have hope. Huh? You're going to have to have some hope. You're going to have to have some hope. Now, let's see here. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 7, told you that the angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him and deliver them. When I'm sowing seed, this angel is around me. When I'm sowing seed, this angel is around me. I got this deliverance angel around my life as I'm sowing. When, listen, my sowing is, is uh, me fearing God. When I'm sowing, I'm fearing God. I can't see. Uh, remember when Ananias and Sapphira did it so. Remember Peter checked them and said, why you let Satan enter your heart? Why? Because they ain't fear the Lord. If they had feared God, they would have sold. But because they did not fear God, they did not sow. So the fear of God make me sow and make me sow stronger. Why? Because I'm in honor. The fear of the Lord make me sow with a mission. Now I understand divine assignment. Now my seed has become a divine assignment. My seed has become a ministry. Ministry of the seed. When I'm sowing, uh, I'm entering into a supernatural ministry that a lot of men and women cannot walk in because your heart got to fear God to be able to sow righteously. How many of y'all want to be the biggest sower? Some of you all probably already are the biggest sower. How many of you all want to be the biggest sower? That was my dream, saints, 16, 15 years old. I remember uh, inside of my room, even when I was 14 years old, I remember begging God, saying, Lord, please make me a multimillionaire so that I can sow. God heard my prayer, man. See, when you pray prayers with the right heart, God will give it to you. Make me blessed so I can sow. Make me rich so that I can give to your work. Man, I want to sow. I, I remember people saying, sow a thousand dollars. I'm like, dang it, man. I want to sow a thousand. Man, I'll never forget when I sold my first thousand dollar seed. Apostle Jesse Aplanis was the first one in uh, the apostleship. The first one to sow a thousand dollar seed into me, Apostle Jesse Aplanis is a multi, well, he's a multi-billionaire. Dr. Mike Murdoch has blessed my life. He has blessed my life. Dr. Mike Murdoch has sown into me large seed. Dr. Mike Murdoch have sold into me. He has invested in me. Dr. Mike Murdoch has sold. Mm, mm, mm. But look what I do. You never betray. Whoever play Jesus in your life. See? See? You got to be under a king to be over kings. Mm, mm, mm. 
the Holy Spirit going to find out if he can make you rich in 2018 by your sowing account. Hmm? By your sowing account. He going to find out if he can make you rich in 2018. Do you know there's a time where Jesus just come and he just watch what's inside of your account? That's all he do. Him and the angels. Come on, minister of finances. Come on, let's look at this. Let's balance the books. You know Jesus do that a lot, right? Let's balance the books. Let's look here. Let's see what's going on here. All right. She ain't sowing nothing. Okay. But she, you know, she prayed and she wanted me to release you to go deal with that, right? Yeah, I know, Lord Jesus, uh, but uh, this is just the account. All right. Well, she's not ready for this. She's not sowing. All right, next. All right. Uh, well, he just told me that he wanted me to give him a debt-free house. But according to seed, I don't see, I don't see the seed according to the debt-free house i don't see the seed according to the death free house yes but lord jesus i just came to bring you the account uh yes thank you so much minister of finances according to the account he not ready for it if he had some more seed on there if he was listening to my voice my spirit because i got my spirit with him i got my spirit inside of him and my spirit be moving him if he would submit to me more I could give him, but he's not ready for the death-free house. So, so I'm going to send some more tests to him, and then we'll talk about this at a later time. Jesus do that all the time. Hmm? Jesus do that all the time. You know what he do? He, he have conversation with his angels. They, they have consultant meetings. They have boardroom meetings, boardroom meetings. And them, and them and Jesus talk and they talk about what's happening on the earth and your angel give report to God. See, when my angel give report to God, he say, oh, prophet Joshua Holmes, uh, you know, you graduated him to apostle. You know, he took on greater demons in the month of July and the month of August. Uh, you told him that he was going to go through some things. He went through the things, but he's still preaching for you. Uh, he still got a joyful spirit. He's still sexy. I say, ha, ha. He's still sexy. Uh, you know, he still got his, his muscles. He still got, yeah. Uh, and, and then, uh, see, my angel always come up with a good report. My angel always come up with a good report. See, he, he ain't got no bad report. See, but what if I don't uh, be Jesus in the earth? What what gonna happen? My angel be like, you know, Lord, he done turn his back. He he don't want to play you in the earth. He don't want to fulfill your assignment. Uh, he don't want yield to you. He don't want to listen to you. You imagine how that report bring to Jesus? But that's what so many people do to Jesus. When the angel go report, they say, you know, this person done turned their back on you, Lord. Uh, we gotta devise a strategy. Uh, possibly, we can get them back in the way. But most likely, you know how this happens. When this happens, the reprobate mind take over. See, you know, what's the report of your angel? What's the report of your angel? Is your angel able to give good reports? Hmm. Is your angel able to give good reports? Malakasa valada. See, I'm conscious of this. Angels give reports to Jesus every day. So if you got a bad day, you know your angel going to tell Jesus on you. And Jesus see you, but your angel going to go up to heaven and say, Jesus, you know, he had a mood swing today. And when we tried to calm him down, he refused our resistance. Uh, you commanded us concerning him to guard him in all his ways. And, our, uh, and he decided that he didn't want us to guard him. Uh, he went to the club, he got, he took a little drinks of the Patron, and, and he wanted us to leave him alone, huh? Then he even turned off his phone. Uh, so, uh, we did our part, but today, uh, he stepped back 
into a wrong direction. See, see what you think happened in there. The angel is reporting your life daily. The angel reporting what you doing. Now, what you think prosperity angels do? They report your finances. They, they report your financial decisions, your financial sowing. That's what the prosperity angels do. They report your financial sowing. They let Jesus know, hey, this person really believe in your system. I think that it's time for us to bring them into multi-millionaire status. They already passed the test with thousands. They already passed the test with hundreds. I think that it's time for us to bring them into multi-millionaire status. And Jesus said, I believe as well. You know best. You know how I roll. I told you that I'll show myself strong in their life. If they got a perfect heart, let's make them a multi-millionaire. Now, when Jesus do that, ain't nothing can stop you. But you got a soul. And you got to sow aggressively. You got to till the ground. Jesus created his angels with uh, residues of his personality. They are his programmed imitators. And they specialize in imitation. They act just like him. They're not in disagreement. They're in agreement. They know what he like. They know what he don't like. They know what he stand for, what he don't stand for. They know what grieves him. They know what unlocks him. Let's see this in Psalm 50. Psalm 50 verse 3, and our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall de devour before him and it shall be very tempest around about him. He shall call to the heavens from above. I'm going to shock you. From above. This is his location. When he not in heaven. Did you catch that? Did you just catch what I said? He shall call to the heavens from above. From above is his, his secret location. This was where he was before he created heaven and earth. From above. He shall call to the heavens from above. Meaning he above heaven. Uh, uh, uh. See... This is what happens. You can sow your way into heaven on earth and you can sow your way from above on earth. Man, you ain't never heard that preached before. Never. I'm giving you some fresh stuff here. I said you can sow your way into heaven on earth or you can sow your way into from above on earth. See, this from above realm, a lot of people won't know. This where you in multi-billionaire, trillionaire status, money flowing from every direction. Solomon had tasted it. Financially, he tasted it. See, he had so many wives. So much doggone pussies. Uh, so much titties. What was going on? He lost his doggone mind. But he had riches. He had. I mess, I mess my people up. Uh, he had so much wealth. <laughs> uh -huh. But he tasted of the from above realm. Uh, he tasted uh, financial from above anointing. Write that down. Oh, say that. Say that. I have financial from above anointing. Ah, in Jesus' name. Say it. I'm introducing a new anointing to you tonight. I'm apostolically revealing to you a new anointing tonight. I have financial from above anointing. I have financial from above. 
anointing. Karabakoranda. These I have financial from above anointing. I have from above finances. Dele coste pele dios. Oh, that's powerful. That's a rhema word. I have from above money in Jesus' name. I have from above money. I'm in the from above financial flow. I got money from above in the name of Jesus. Wealth from above cometh to me now. Hmm? Now the Bible says he shall call to the heavens from above. So the heavens is a lower level to even God. Because he from above. So he in the from above level and he call into the heavens. So he call into the heavens because the heavens is a lesser level. So when God lets you experience the heavens, that's not the fullness of God. Mata karada. When, when you, when he lets you experience the heavens financially, that's not the fullness of God. You still gotta get to from above. You ain't tasted from above finances. So, so you can have heaven on earth finances, but you ain't got from above finances. From above wealth. From above increase. From above. See, see, let, let me tell you something. You gotta get into from above sowing. Get into from above sowing. You step out of heavenly sowing, you step out of heavy sowing, and into from above sowing. When you get into from above sowing, you get from above wealth, and from above increase, and from above, from above finances. See? Man, I do like Jesus right now. I call to the heavens from above, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call to heavens from above. And I loose finances from above, wealth from above, increase from above. I call to the heavens from above. And I, I speak prosperity and money from above right now manifesting for you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Masoko Levasua, Zelevakala In the name of Jesus, you satisfied from above. You debt cancel from above. You are free from depression from above. You are free from sickness from above. Health anointing from above. Wealth anointing from above. Harvest anointing from above. Reaping anointing from above. You have an above anointing. A from above anointing financially. You ever heard that before? You receive it? You have a from above financial anointing. You ever heard it before? You receive it? Hmm? Huh? You, you have a from above wealth anointing. In the name of Jesus. No wonder the Bible say he giveth thee power to get wealth. He going to keep on giving you that power. See, you can be in the heavenly realm. Of that power. He can jump call to the heavens. And have you in the heavenly realm. Of that power. But what happened when he bring you into from above. Wealth. What happened when he bring you into from above riches. Now he giveth thee another level of power to get wealth. To move in another glory of wealth. Say I'm moving in another glory of wealth. Right now. Say it. I'm moving in another glory of wealth. Right now. From above. From above. I'm not just living heaven on earth. I'm living from above on earth. Wow, wow, wow. Now I'm living from above on the earth. From above. See? See? Uh... I have a from above money mantle on my life. Heavy, heavy, heavy. I'm living in money from above. Uh, 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 from above financial anointing is on me. I am moving 
in a from above financial anointing. Heavy, strong, a strong money anointed. Wealth that's from above is resting on me. Say it. Say it. Say it. You need to say that right there. Money from above is resting on me right now. Say it. Money from above. Huh? Money from above anointing is resting on my life right now. Say, I am free from all bondage from above. Anointed. I am free from all bondage by the from above anointing. That from above anointing. That's what the Bible say right here. Psalm 50 verse 4. He shall call to the heavens from above. And watch this. And to the earth. That he may judge his people. Look at that. Gather my saints together unto me. See, that's what I'm telling you on the 21st. See, I have that revelation. Jesus trusted me with that. Remember I told you on the 21st is a day of judgment and justice? My car, license, my car tag say the 21st. See? The 21st. Look what they say. Gather my saints together, together, uh, together unto me. That they may have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Watch that. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Do you catch that? You make a covenant with God by sacrifice. So when I sow my seed. And I'm sowing. Sacrificially, bountifully, big seeds. I am making a covenant with God. Look what he said. Gather my saints together unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Are you catching this? By sacrifice. Huh? Are you catching this? Look what it's saying right here. This by sacrifice. So, so what's taking place in this text? The covenant is being made by sacrificial giving. My sowing is creating a covenant with me and God. My, my sowing is creating a covenant with me and God. What Psalm 89, 34 say, my covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. He make a covenant. Huh? When we sow, he make a covenant when we give. See, this is why David was able to pray in the text and say, sin now prosperity. Why was David able to do this? Because he was in the glory of God. He was a sower. He had a covenant with God. So he was able to demand prosperity. He was able to speak prosperity with boldness. He was able to command prosperity. He was a prosperity commander because of the seed. Wow. Psalm 118. Look at this. Look at Psalm 111 rather. Look what it say, verse 5. 
he has given me unto them that fear him, he will be ever mindful of his covenant. See that covenant? That covenant when I'm sowing. He remembered. He remembered. He come into covenant with me when I'm sowing. When I'm sowing, he come into covenant with me. And he give me meat. Remember he told Adam in the garden, this seed shall be for your meat. Look at this. Go to Psalm 118. Verse 25. Let's go to Psalm 18. Verse 25. Say now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Psalm 118 verse 25. Save now. This is a, this a decree. I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Saints, look what David prayed right here. This is an apostolic decree. Send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. This is an activation of prosperity angels. When, when I'm sending now prosperity, this is an activation of prosperity angels. This is an activation. I'm releasing prosperity angels. When I say send now prosperity, oh Lord, prosperity angels are moving in my life. Prosperity angels are ministering to me. They ministering for me. When I say send now prosperity, I'm releasing large, innumerable company of prosperity angels to move in my life. I'm making my way prosperous. I'm moving in John chap jo Joshua chapter 189. I'm making my way prosperous. Saints, the Holy Spirit said we're going to sow into this word tonight. Psalm 118 verse 25. 118 dollars and the holy spirit said 25 cent the spirit of the lord said to tell you that as you release this seed and you decrease send now prosperity he said there's angels that are upon your life in the month of August. Jesus said. My angels shall respect. The financial covenant that I make with you. I'm sending. Now. Your prosperity. We saw an into this tonight. Into JHM. Those of you all sowing, you, you need to connect with this apostolic anointing. Some of you are watching me, you never sowed before. Connect with this apostolic anointing, this prophetic anointing. Don't miss out on these miracles happening. Don't be a spectator. So, there's some of you all say, Prophet Joshua, I ain't even got 118 to my name. Sow your best seed and put 18 cent at the end of it. You sowing into Psalm 118, verse 25. $118.25. Your send now prosperity seed. Send now prosperity, O oh Lord, seed. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. Large prosperity angels are moving with you in August. Financial prosperity is manifesting for you. 
Madonna, bless you. Bless you in Jesus' name. Large prosperity angels. Send now prosperity. Send now prosperity seed. We sowing into this tonight. The Holy Ghost going to move. The power of God is here. The glory of God is here. He here for this. He here for this. All eradication of lack tonight. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. 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 Abraham had this angel moving with him to deliver him. From financial lack. This same angel was moving with Isaac while he was sowing. That's why Isaac had so much prosperity. We wonder why the Bible say that God gave him a hundredfold the same year and prospered him. He was receiving sin now prosperity. He was in a sin now prosperity anointing. Isaac had the supernatural happen to him while he was sowing in a famine land, meaning there was no money, but supernatural money came to him. He was in a drought, but he still was able to shout. He was laughing at famine. Because sin now prosperity. The sin now prosperity anointed. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I release the power of God. As I've spoken your word, I release the power of God. I release it strong on this line. I release a strong prophetic anointing. A strong apostolic anointing on the seed. I command this seed to prosper. I command this seed to return back. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. And I decree Send now prosperity on every seed And I lose prosperity I bless every person Sowing And I release the prosperity anointing That's on my life I release it on them I release the same prosperity anointing That you have given to me Holy Ghost Holy Spirit, I release it right now. I release it right now on this airline, on this line right here. In the name of Jesus, point of contact. I transfer the anointing of prosperity. I transfer the anointing of prosperity. I transfer the anointing of prosperity right now. I transfer the anointing to prosper. I transfer it right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. I release the prosperity anointing right now. Right now on this line. As we on here. As we on here. So. 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 So your way out. So. So. Move with the Holy Ghost. Move with the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid, so, so, don't be afraid to move with God. Jesus know what he doing. Holy Spirit know what he doing. He don't give us instructions without production. He know what he doing. Leoya, Leoya, oh. In the name of Jesus, prosperity angels, you know me. I lose you. 
on the people connected to me right now. Every person. As you move with me, may you move with them. As you move with me, may you move with them. I loose you to prosper their way. I loose you to prosper their finances. I loose you to prosper the work of their hands. Prosperity. Prosperity. I release prosperity glory. Prosperity favor. Prosperity wealth. Prosperity power on you right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Look what uh, Psalm, Psalm 118 verse 19. Look what it say. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. Why is it called the gates of righteousness? Remember. Remember sowing. Increases my righteousness. Remember. So. If it say open to me the gates of righteousness. Those gates are open to me when I'm sowing. When I'm sowing these gates fly open for me. So I have. Listen, rights, justness, rights, justness. Think about it. I'm saying it different. But righteousness is my rights manifested. Write that down. That's another definition. Rights, justness. Rights is my rights manifested. I have a right to be rich, right to be wealthy, right to be healthy, right to be happy. So it's a manifestation of my rights. When I'm sowing, I have a manifestation of my rights. See? Say, open to me the gates. These gates come in when I'm honoring God with my finances. These gates are open to me when I'm moving in bold honor. These gates are open to me when I'm tilling the ground. I'm sowing with a purpose. These gates are open for me. decree and I declare the blessing prosperity on every single person right now in the name of Jesus 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 